Hi and welcome back. Today I want to look at a free program called Grammarly. Now you can buy the premium version as well and obviously when you buy a premium version you get so many more options. But I find a free version works pretty well. Let's have a look and see what it actually does. So the first thing you do is download it. So I'm going to use Google Chrome to find it and download it. But I've already downloaded it but I'll show you where you can download it from. Select a Grammarly official site. Once open, you can then download it from that site. As I've already downloaded it, it's only given the option to download the premium version. Once downloaded, you'll notice in your browser top right hand corner you've got a little icon. And that's your Grammarly add on there. Also, make sure it is installed correctly. Select your settings top right hand corner. Open up extensions and make sure that you've enabled it down here. If I scroll down, you can see Grammarly's here and it's enabled. Once installed and ready to go, it also installs it if you want into Outlook Express or your office applications. You can use it partly on the internet as well and in Windows. So I'm going to open up because I've downloaded it for Windows 10. When the Grammarly editor opens, we then have access to various options. Now, one, I can add a new document here by copying and pasting, or I can import a document by clicking import. Then what Grammarly will do will check it for my grammar and spelling errors. So what I'm going to select is new, and it opens up in a window, and then I've copied something from the internet, so I'm control V, and it's now going to check it for me. And you can see to the right here it comes up automatically. So you can see with the S and the Z the difference is there, so I'm just going to change that to the English version and then I'll go down it's telling me there's an issue here now I've got allowing structure it's not the spelling issue it's more of a, a grammar issue so if I now click the little arrow to the right give me more information telling me that the noun phrase structure seems to be missing so what I can click is more options and it's actually telling me why it thinks it's incorrect and how the grammar might be incorrect so I can check it and change that if I need to or if you want you can just click ignore so that's a nice little interface to copy and paste information in and then check for your spellings. Also, you can do new import from here. Come down, you can export. So once the spelling's done, click export and you can choose where you want to export that to. Also, you can choose document type. As you can see, we've got contextual spellings. I can turn it off or on if I want to check the contextual spellings. Also, grammar, if I need to check my grammar. Also, punctuation sentence structure and style. You can see at the bottom here the premium version says there's one writing issue in this text as well but you obviously need to upgrade to the premium version. Does plagiarism as well, really important if you're doing a degree and copyright is paramount. Again you need to upgrade to that and also vocabulary enhancements which is also need to upgrade to premium version. You've also got a professional proofreading option, I don't know how good that is but you've got a professional proofreader ready to check your document right now so if you are on a degree it's probably worth you paying the extra to use the software. So I'm now going to close that and I'm going to open up Outlook Express which is my email client and we should also add an add in there, it's a little plugin you can use for Grammarly. Now you can see top right hand corner I've got disabled Grammarly or I can enable it so I'm going to leave it enabled and I'm going to do a new document by clicking new. And you can see on the right Grammarly pops up ready to check my spelling and grammar. So let's give it a go. And you can see to the right it's checked in, it's come up with three critical issues. So the first one is telling me confused, possessive and contraction. So if I click the drop down menu and you can see where my grammar issue is there. So I'm going to change that and it goes into my spelling issue which is really and last of all possibly confused word plain and it's absolutely right because I wanted plan. I kind of like it because it just works to the right it doesn't get in your way and you carry on typing without something popping up and slowing you down. So that's how well it works in Outlook. Should we try it in Word? And give it a go here. Again there's your plugin it's not enabled at the moment so I'm going to select enable and you see it pops up to the right. Bear in mind if you don't get a plug-in I found it's because I turned off macros so you need to have macros, allow macros or it doesn't enable the plugins. and you can do that by going to file, options, 
add-ins by clicking go and make sure you've got it ticked there also file options trust center trust center settings and then you can choose whether or not you want to disable your macros now be careful with macros because they can be dangerous but you can see I've just enabled all macros not recommended potentially dangerous but I've got other add-ins that I want to run so I'll leave that but that's entirely up to you so click OK and let's see how well it works here now you can see the toolbar at the top the ribbon it's got me options that I can check while I have a document for example I want contextual spellings checked grammar and my punctuation maybe I don't worry too much about style or sentence structure and it actually tells you you can find misplaced words, faulty word order and incorrect sentence structures so definitely worth a look at so again you've got vocabulary enhancements again you do need the premium version the same goes for plagiarism but let's check how good the spelling is so hello my friend how is life you see it checking on the right first option you see I've got a bit of punctuation issue I needed a comma so I'm just going to select that comma done friend spelling correct I'm happy with that I can carry on with my work so what I like about Grammarly you can do your spelling as you're going along rather than doing it and then with a spell check it doesn't seem to get in your way so it works quite well so let's see how it works on the internet as well so I'm not going to save that right let's have a google see how well it works in there you see the plug in top right hand corner I showed you before so I'm going to go to a YouTube channel, why not do one of mine, so I'm going to open up my YouTube channel with various videos and I'm going to open up any link, read and write 11, let's have a look at that I'm just going to pause that video, I'm going to scroll down and say I want to leave a comment on my own website now you can see to the right hand corner of the comments window is a G icon indicating that Grammarly is now watching and checking for spelling and punctuation Grammar. So let's give it a go. So you can see there's two errors there and it's highlighted them. So if I hover over, I can choose the correct spelling. Also, if you want, if you want to work in that window, it's too small, just uncomfortable. Click correct with Grammarly and it'll open up the interface for you. And I can work here, it gives me more room as well. So first spelling friends, you can see to the right here, you choose the correct one and that's the one I need and it goes on to the next spelling so ready I'm happy with that and soon and there's your spelling done then if I click this button it takes me back to the video and you can see the changes have been done for you definitely great for using online I know you've got built in spell checkers in Word for example and you've also got Outlook Express but this works across many applications including the internet it seems to work quite well without being intrusive download and have a little look at it.